Hello and welcome to Capuchin TV, your Catholic broadcasting ministry on this program of the life of St. Joseph. Remember in this year we are celebrating the year of St. Joseph for the whole of the Catholics and uh, uh, according to that we focus on the historical novel uh, that is titled You Joseph by the author Juan Maria Vanet, and uh, with the help of one of the father uh, who will be our guest and who has always been the guest for this uh, program, will help us to understand uh, what do we learn from Joseph and uh, the people that uh, are featured in this uh, historical novel. Our topic today being their preparation for the wedding. Since in our last episode, that is the fourth episode, we talked about uh, how Mary accepted the proposal to Joseph. And uh, we shall continue. And in case you missed uh, any of our episode, you can always find it uh, down on um, our social media handles uh, that is written down on your screen. And uh, that is uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, and uh, name them all. And uh, help me invite uh, our guest today. Hi, Father. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How have you been? Fine, fine. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm happy that the churches are opened uh -huh. now. Yes, very true for the, for the eucharistic service on uh -huh. sundays yeah. the christians have been waiting for this moment it's <laughs> yes, been a it's, long journey this is a long journey uh -huh. they missed the easter and we are very happy now uh -huh. they can go back to the churches though in limited numbers but still it is something it's Rather much better nothing, yes. it's getting better yes. Thank you. And uh, he is uh, for the George Kocholiko, who is the spiritual director of the Philothea Missionaries. And uh, we're going to talk about today the preparation for the wedding. And uh, you can, before you tell us what we expect uh, in this episode, we can begin with a word of prayer as usual. Yes, good. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today we shall we'll be speaking about uh, how Mary and Joseph went ahead with the preparation for the wedding. And we want to remember all those who are preparing for marriage these days or these coming years, that the Lord may give them good insight and uh, assistance and help as they prepare for the wedding. And we invoke St. Joseph's intercession on our lives, on our families. St. Joseph, master of interior life, teach us to pray, to, be, to suffer and to be silent. St. Joseph, organize this TV show today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh, yes, you can continue. Okay, good. Uh, today, uh, we want to speak about the preparations for marriage. Now, Mary and Joseph basically agreed to be spouse, to be together for the rest of their lives. Mary had her hesitations, but God helped her to overcome that hesitations. Now, according to Jewish tradition, uh, this uh, marriage is a bit strange in the sense that normally it is a family that arranges the marriage. However, we saw how the family of Elizabeth and Zachary came to the assistance of Joseph uh, to and meet Mary and agree. Why this exception? Primarily because Joseph's father is no more. Otherwise, it would be his father, Jacob, who would take the leadership. And then the marriage was within the clan, not outside of the ma. It is rare to, for someone to marry outside of the clan. So the first cousins, the second cousins, they would be the ones who, who get married. And the father of the family will contact the father of the family of the girl, the lady, and then they would talk and negotiate. And the, the father of the man, the groom, have to give the dowry, uh, which could be money, gold, silver, or cattle, whatever it is, but they have to give as a sign of appreciation or receiving their daughter into this family. And then there are two important moments in this, which uh, is not normally celebrated here in here in Africa in our communities, but for the Jewish community there are two celebrations. One is a celebration of the betrothal, uh, 
and the celebration of the marriage. Both are equally important and both are very great celebration. So long. The celebration of the betrothal is takes place in the lady's home. There is some. But remember, if it is a normal marriage, it would be basically within the same village uh, because the girl and the boy comes from the same <laughs> village. But here we are going to see uh, again another difference. The lady Mary is from Bethlehem, far away village, and uh, Joseph is from Bethlehem, Amen. about 140 kilometers uh, mm -hmm. distance. Mm -hmm. So oh, it is going to cause problems anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, the girl's family there, you have this great celebration, the betrothal, and from that on, day on, the woman, the lady is considered married, married to the man from the day of betrothal. Uh, if you have to separate, it is a procedure and it is like a divorce. Uh, it is like a divorce. And then they will give uh, some months to pass between the betrothal and the marriage to arrange as well as to, to make sure that this lady whom I am going to marry was, is, uh, is a faithful woman. You know, if he was not a faithful woman, mm -hmm. uh, there would be pregnancy and visibility and people would know. Uh, so, so that was a way of assuring that mm -hmm. I am marrying someone who is faithful, who will remain faithful to me. And then the wedding day, the woman and her party would uh, will go together. The woman will be carried in a procession. It's a beautiful celebration. You can, you can see even today this celebration. Woman being taken to the spouse's home. And, uh, and their spouse is the groom's home. And the groom's home now, there is uh, the celebration, the great meal, the festive meal, and then the consummation of the marriage. And with that, uh, the marriage is consummated and it is forever. Okay. Israelites for some time in the early history they had polygamous unions but by the time of Joseph and Mary polygamy had disappeared from their community for culture and after some years after some centuries it was even outlawed within Judaism. Today you don't hear about polygamy at all within okay. Judaism meaning these are customs that came up but which did not correspond to the mind of God and the Jewish people uh, came to realize that and they gave up such uh, practices mm -hmm. and uh, today they are uh, their marriages are a mon monogamous marriage even in Jesus time that is why we don't hear mm -hmm. and Jesus himself saying it is necessary the man should leave his father and mother and be joined with uh, with his wife well that is more or less a background of their preparation okay and uh, sorry about her like uh, Joseph was the one from Bethlehem and then uh, Mary was from Yes, Nazareth. Nazareth, yes. Yeah, that was just a point of correction. Father just said, uh, the opposite, yeah, yeah, the opposite, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, and uh, what are some of the traditions of the Jewish uh, when it comes to their wedding preparations? So, the wedding preparation now, uh, the families are getting going to get involved. Joseph does not have a father, so he would go and announce to his uncle that he has found someone. And the uncle would approve or disapprove. It is, uh, and then of course his mother is surviving. She so will announce to the mother, and then to the brothers and sisters, and uh, and uh, uh, help the family to accept the bride that he has chosen for himself. In this case, uh, otherwise, as I told you, the family arranges everything. The the, the they are consulted a little bit but if the two families are in agreement the marriage mm -hmm. goes ahead now in the case of joseph and mary uh, as you corrected me and as you rightly said mm -hmm. joseph is from bethlehem mary is from nazareth mm -hmm. and uh, it is very very rare for such a marriage to happen it so happened because they met by the providence of god in Jerusalem. Now, Mary made an important request when Joseph proposed to her that uh, he would like to marry her, etc. Mary said, well, I got the sign from God and uh, I am open. However, I have a condition. The condition is my mother is very old. Remember, Mary was uh, born when they were rather advanced in age. And uh, the father, Joachim, is no more there. And therefore, Mary is the one who helps the mother 
uh, in her old age uh, to assisting her with various house chores and very many other things. And um, Mary gets free only when her mother decides to spend a few weeks uh, with her cousins in the, her original village, leaves Nazareth. And then that is the time when Mary uh, comes up to Jerusalem to meet her cousins and also to spend some time in the temple. Mm -hmm. So when uh, Mary told Joseph, that this is the problem. I cannot come really and settle with you in uh, Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. It is impossible in the culture for the mother-in-law to go and stay with uh, the family of the son-in-law. It is not allowed by culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, you may have to come down. And Joseph, it was a problem because that is not a culture, that is not their tradition. The tradition is the girl comes to the boy's home. It is, that is why the, the, the woman leaves his father and mother and be joined with okay. his, the, the husband. No? Okay. So, but Joseph saw through. Joseph, it shows the quality of Joseph's heart. He is a very reasonable man. There is on one hand what the culture demands, on the other hand, actually, what are the, si the situation of Mary demands. And uh, he sees here, Mary's request is very reasonable and very understandable because her mother is old and she, if she leaves her, she would be all alone, left alone. Okay. Uh, and uh, he agrees with that one. So he sees the reasonableness of her request. And secondly, he's a very compassionate person. Mm -hmm. Very loving person. Okay. We later also notice the quality of this this man. Mm -hmm. He is reasonable. He is compassionate. He is un, uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. And the mother is told, "Well, I agreed with Mary that uh, I would be willing to go uh, to her village in Nazareth." The mother was a bit hesitant because it is not the tradition. Yet the mother, too, being a good woman, understood. That, uh, that it is necessary, there is no other choice, there is no other option here. And besides, she, Ruth now, uh -huh. Ruth has other sons, she would be taken care of the other sons in their home. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Father, would you say like uh, the way, uh, was it uh, one of the challenges that, that Joseph faced uh, during the preparation of their marriage? Yes, it is one of the challenges, but it is primarily within, uh, among themselves as a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, later, I would also say the brothers, sisters had serious problems in accepting this. Mm -hmm. uh, because they were much more rooted mm -hmm. in their cultural tradition and they said, no, no, we can, you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And they would raise serious objections mm -hmm. to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, besides, uh, Joseph now begins to experience within himself mm -hmm. the interior challenges. Now, sometimes we think when you are God's child, everything goes smooth. Mm -hmm. It's just the opposite. So uh, we expect maybe more challenges that uh, yeah, he might be facing in this uh, topic. Yes, in fact, he would face much more challenges. In okay, uh, I think we can take a very short break and then we'll get back uh, with this topic and then we continue. We see uh, with uh, some of the challenges that Joseph experienced, uh, some of uh, people and even young people who are in that preparation do face in this uh, real time. Okay, let's take a very short break and this is the program of the Life of St. Joseph with me, Maureen Kimani. Blessed Joseph, faithful guardian of my Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Capuchin TV, Kitambulisho Katoliki. Daraja. Sakramenti ya daraja ndiyo sakramenti ambayo mwanamme mkatoliki aliitwa na Mungu hupata mamlaka na neema ya kuendeleza ndani ya kanisa utume Kristo aliyowakabithi mitume wake. Kupata daraja kama sikiza tuni yako, tuma neno sikiza likifuatwa na nambari Saba tatu nane moja sufuri mbili saba sufuri utume kwa nane moja moja
Kapuchin TV, kitambulisho katoliki. Blessed Joseph, faithful guardian of my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, protector of thy spouse. Welcome back, dear viewer, on this program of the life of St. Joseph with me, Maureen Kimani, and our guest in studio is Father George Kocholiko, who is the spiritual director of the Philadelphia missionaries and before we had gone for the break we were talking about the challenges uh, some of the challenges that Joseph faced during this preparation of their wedding with Mary maybe father you can take it from there yes thank you thank you very much so uh, I think this uh, reflection on the life of St. Joseph in preparation might also be very helpful to our young people uh, young couples who are preparing for wedding marriage. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the interior movements of Joseph, Joseph is confronted by two negative movements. One is the movement of anxiety. He's anxious. Uh, and uh, the second is uh, impatience. He wants things to happen right, right now. now, right now, right now. <laughs> Which is typically <laughs> young <laughs> reactions. Uh, yeah. Patience is something that we learn with a lot of experience and suffering. Mm -hmm. Initially, we all know, and we are young people, we are young people, we are rather impatient. We want to justice to be done, things to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, say Joseph, or Joseph also expected. Mm -hmm. He wanted everything to proceed very smoothly within a short time. And he had calculated about three to four months before she, he could shift to Nazareth and then the betrothal and then later the marriage. So that was his work. But however, things are slow, things happen. So he had to learn patience. And secondly, he was anxious, anxious. What will be his situation in Nazareth? Will that family accept me? He does mm -hmm. not know anybody there. Yeah. Is, that is a strange land. Compared to Bethlehem, it is so small, it is negligible. Uh, uh, and then uh, what about Mary herself? Will she change her mind? Maybe Mary, you know, as I told you, in the clan system, there are first cousins, second cousins who are entitled to marry Mary. Uh, and Mary is a lady, girl, so she does not have much to say in when the families decide, you see, in that tradition. Uh -huh. So if the families decide and Mary is told, no, you, there is no Joseph you should marry, so and so, that is uh, from our clan, then she might be forced to marry. So there are things that simply torment the mind. You know, what is actually anxiety? Anxiety is a sort of fear uh, for which there is no clear object. It, object keeps shifting. Mm -hmm. uh, one moment it is, will I be okay there? Will the family accept me? Another moment it is, will Mary be, uh, <laughs> will say, uh, oh, will the extended family create problems? Mm -hmm. So the objects of fear keep shifting, and so you live on with an uh, uh, underlying negative feeling. And that J Joseph had to go through. However, he was told what to do in such situations. By whom? By Zachary. By Zachary. Let me read what Zachary told him. Okay. Uh, the time will fly, said Zachary. In the meantime, prepare yourself and pray for your wedding. Because prayer, when you remain in silence and pray and place our desires and intentions in God's hand, God takes away the anxiety, God takes away that fear and also that impatience. God makes us to be patient, to be patient. God helps us to trust in Him. So this advice was given. In the meantime, prepare yourself and pray for your wedding as the book of Tobias uh, teaches us. May the God of heaven Blessed be his name, grant you a happy future together, and bless you with his benevolence. And may he grant you a lot of children, Elizabeth added, uh, children. It is, uh, and so, that is the secret. As you prepare, we must keep preparing, doing our things. And you know, I, I see how well they prepare. They have committees and uh, they have a list of do's, what to do, who is going to do that. And you, as you do all that one, once you have planned, 
place everything in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. Let not impatience trouble you. Let not anxiety trouble you. Say a rosary for that intention. Take part in the Eucharist with that intention. Receive Holy Communion with that intention. And so let there be peace in your heart. So that was one of the major challenges that Joseph faced as a young man. Mm -hmm. Now, other challenge came from the family members. As I told you, the family was not well disposed to the idea that Joseph should shift from mm -hmm. Bethlehem. It's not to allowed to even in this uh, era. <laughs> yes, it's uh -huh. not allowed. Uh -huh. It's clear. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, they objected. It was, you know, at times the... First of all, the uncle, when the uncle heard about this, about mm -hmm. the marriage, mm -hmm. uncle, who takes the place of the father, you know, tried to pour some cold water mm -hmm. over the over enthusiasm <laughs> of Joseph. Mm -hmm. this, this is what he told him. Uh, the elderly man said, Ah, oh, everyone talks like this in the beginning without knowing what life and women are really like. Time will teach you and dispel all the illusions. Okay. Of course, it has a purpose of bringing you back into reality. But sometimes it is also discouraging for young people when elderly people speak that way. Uh -huh. uh, you don't know women, <laughs> you know, you, you know, just cool down, cool down. Uh -huh. Anyway, it may be necessary. Sometimes it is also disappointing and discouraging. Uh -huh. Now, when it came to the sister, the sisters can be very controlling at times in the lives of the, uh, their brothers, no? The sister is the one who uh, very strongly objected. He said, in Nazareth, you said, then are you going to live there? Mm -hmm. uh, it is too much, Joseph. We must not move away from Bethlehem. It is our custom. And when one marries, that when one marries, the woman goes to the husband's house and not the other way around, especially if the husband is the firstborn. Uh -huh. And one after the other, they were uh, opposing Joseph's idea. So Joseph uh, had to help them understand why this decision. And he's not abandoning the family. Now the family, all the, his siblings are basically settled. So, and the mother has the youngest one, Sadok, at home to take care of her. Uh, yes, when there is a problem, he said, I will be here with you. When there are issues, I will be here with you. But it is necessary. So, through speaking, slow speaking, slowly they gave in. Mm -hmm. Besides, you know, Mary also played a part indirectly. Mm -hmm. When Joseph was coming away uh, from, from uh, Ayn Karam, back to Bethlehem, Mary gave a lot of gifts. That was her nature, not because of uh, getting something out of them, no. She was a very generous woman. She gave them small, 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 little, little gifts. Mm -hmm. So you said you have three brothers, you said you have a mother, you said you have sisters, mm -hmm. and for each one of them, she prepared a gift. Was it because maybe she wanted to be loved by the family, or uh, what do you think? No, it was that? not so. Uh -huh. Some people do gifts with uh, ulterior motives to <laughs> influence. Uh -huh. But here it was simply her, uh, her Agenda. generosity. Mm -hmm. her, her heart was like that. It was a heart that was always giving. No, you, I'm sure you have met people who are so generous uh, they they don't have much problem in giving. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, to that extent, they might even exaggerate. They go giving and they end up having nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are characters of that sort. For people who are very generous with the little they have. I recall one day the Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, narrating this episode. She knew in the slum there was a family who was not having food and uh, somebody had donated, given her extra food that evening. So she took that and went into the slum to that mother who was uh, starving there. And um, as soon as she gave her food, without telling mother anything, wait for a moment mother, and she immediately divided it into two and took half of it to another home because that woman knew wow. there was another woman mm -hmm. who was as hungry as her. Mm -hmm. This is the um, generosity of some people. They may be very poor, but the little they have, they share. they share. Mary was such a person. Whatever she had, she was not wanting to keep her, uh, things for herself. She was giving. So they, the, the family saw this. 
And uh, when they saw that, and they saw Joseph's convictions, and they saw the reasonableness of that decision, they gave in and they said, okay, and if that is the thing, go ahead and we will support you. That is how the family agreed, the closest family. Okay. Yes. And uh, further in this scenario, we can see how uh, the, the Mary and Joseph agreed to move to the other side of uh, Nazareth. And uh, nowadays you find that the families and even uh, they are very okay, a woman coming up from your side and then you go, or even the other way around, uh, vice versa. And uh, some parents you find they don't want uh, their kids to be married to other tribe. What, what about that? What can yes. you say? Uh, thank God our communities have grown, progress. Mm -hmm. The early times, uh, because they, they mm -hmm. had good reasons for not allowing people to marry from outside the clan, they didn't want to lose the purity of a particular clan, their traditions. They didn't want to lose the traditions, the customs. And they want to remain pure as a community. True. It was to protect the community that they said no to marriages to people outside of the community. Mm -hmm. Now, with the time, uh, we have come to know each other better and we have realized every community has its strengths and weaknesses. 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 Mm -hmm. And the young people uh, with the education, the modern education, they are studying in the schools and colleges and they are intermingling meet, meeting. And if you are living in a cosmopolitan city like Nairobi, you are not only pe meeting people of one tribe, you are people of um, other tribes, also other ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. And so the love is love. They feel attracted to each other mm -hmm. and then they want to marry. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there was a time when the, um, the clan or the family would raise a serious objection and some of them had to go disobey the clan and the family and uh, to an extent ostracized by that community. Now what we have to learn is why was the tradition insisting that we should, one should marry from the same clan? It was to preserve the what is good in that tribe. So when you marry today outside of the tribe, we must respect what is uh, good in the tribe and enhance it and grow with it. It okay. should not be an attempt to say I dislike you and I go away <laughs> I will from curse you. you. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, it, is, uh, it is coming together as people after all the book of the holy book says we are all created in God's image in his likeness. It doesn't matter which tribe, which ethnic group, which nationality we come from, we all have God's image in us. And so that image is made visible sometimes in uh, intercultural, intertribal, inter-ethnic marriages. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a time when that was very rare, and so they had to face. Okay, I time. find this uh, topic very interesting, and uh, we, we might continue to our next episode, maybe next time, yes, next week. Yes, the next time I want to tell you, uh -huh. with this, you think the problems are over. Uh -huh. No, it's, no not it's not over. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you, sometimes people think that uh, God's children are so blessed they have no problems. Mm -hmm. In fact, they are more problems, uh, Marine, mm -hmm. than the others. God tests his mm -hmm. children, chastises the one whom he loves, mm -hmm. says the book of Sirach. Okay, what's your final word on this topic? Well, my final word is especially to those who are planning their marriage in the near future, preparing, etc. Uh, prepare well, you must, we must use our intelligence, speak to your family members, pe people who are all part of, try to engage every one of them in mm -hmm. their preparation, uh, especially uh, speaking to them, make them know that family, you value family, marriage is a family event, it is not only an isolated event between you and your your spouse, no, it is a family event, and the family must be involved as much as possible, and they must all join in the celebration as you prepare. And then you will be you will be impatient with some people because they may not respond to your request as you want. Mm -hmm. You might get feel like uh, throwing out some people from the group, etc. Be patient, be considerate, be gentle. You need all of them, and then do not give into anxiety. Too much anxiety. Uh, too much fear, trust in God, and all shall be well. Okay, those are so much kind, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're going to end our today's episode, and before we do that, we can uh, end it with a word of prayer. Yes. 
So we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to speak and share about the life of St. Joseph and Mary, especially as we move toward their marriage in preparation. We place into your hands, Heavenly Father, all those young people and for, who are now thinking of their wedding and beginning to plan their wedding. May they not be overcome with impatience. May they not be overcome with anxious and fearful movements in their hearts. May they trust in you and may know that it is you who brings people together in the holy marriage. And may they resolve to remain faithful to your teaching as they commit themselves to each other in a lifelong relationship. Holy Mother, be with them and be with us, all of us who are listening to this program. May you assist all of us to grow in love for Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Saint Joseph, Master of Interior Life, teach us to pray, to suffer and to be silent. Saint Joseph, bless our families, bless all those young people who are preparing for their wedding. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for, the, for making time to enlighten our viewer and uh, we shall continue our, this, uh, on this uh, topic, the preparation for wedding, even what uh, young people should expect. And uh, when you get impatient, you should pray and uh, pray to God that you can have that patience uh, to continue and, to, and everything will be okay. Thank you so much for tuning in and for making time to watch this uh, program, The Life of St. Joseph. My name is Maureen Kimani and my guest has been Father George Kocholiko, who is the spiritual director of, of the Philodia Missionaries. See you next time. God bless. Blessed Joseph, faithful God. Kapuchin TV, Kitambulisho Katoliki Kipaimara Ni sakramenti yenye kumpa mkristu roho mtakatifu na ukamilifu wa mapaji yake saba Kumfanya mkristu mkamilifu na kumfanya shahidi hodari wa Yesu Kristu mpaka kufa Kupata Kipaimara kama sikiza tuni yako Tuma neno sikiza likifuato na nambari Saba tatu nane moja sufuri mbili saba mbili kwa nane moja moja. St. Bridget Dispensary is a high quality and affordable healthcare facility located along General Waringa Street in Isli, adjacent to Starehe Boys Center just at the flyover. Sponsored by the Cal